Okay, it is two o'clock and we'll begin. So thank you everyone for joining us in our virtual open house today, Experience VCC. We're really excited to have you here. My name is Elizabeth and I'll be your moderator for today. So just to um, start us off with a few housekeeping items, if you do um, need to request for a sign language interpreter, please uh, mention so in the chat room. Um, we will be taking questions a little bit later this, this session. So type them away in the chat box. We'll answer them when it's time to. And um, yeah, please include your program of interest as well. Okay, so before we dive right in, I do wanna acknowledge that we are working on the unceded territory of the Coast Salish people um, including the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh Nations. So the way this is going to run today is you'll hear a series of short presentations from some of our staff here at VCC. And um, then you'll we'll have a Q&A and we'll hear from one of our advisors who will let you know about what the steps are in the application process. If you have questions about admissions, we'll answer that there. Um, but first off, I do want to begin with a quick poll here. So if you could just, um, you know, mention uh, when you're considering starting your program. Just waiting for a couple more. Okay, looks like a lot of you are looking to begin this year. Some of you are unsure and we've got one for next year. So if you are un a little unsure, maybe we can address that in the question and answer period um, and we'll get right started. Okay, so um, the first uh, program we would like to introduce you to in this business session is going to be on building management. For that, we have Sid, who's here to talk a little bit more about that. So, um, oh, watch out for this uh, Q and A. The poll. Um, so, Sid, over to you. Thank you, Elizabeth. And please do let me know if uh, I'm not very audible. Uh, I'm assuming I am. Uh, and also, uh, thank you for that poll. It was interesting. I did not participate because I am representing a program, but I was looking for uh, a now option. I'm ready to get into the program right away. So uh, hi, everyone. Again, I am Said Kuller, and I'm happy to talk about our building manager certificate program that is offered through continuing studies. Uh, I'd like to begin by you know, allowing you to think about where are building managers? Where do you find them? Uh, pretty much everywhere, whether you live in a condominium, attend a school, visit a community center, a shopping mall, a hospital, or recreation facilities, you know, all these establishments, they need care and maintenance, and that's where building managers come to help. Uh, you might also see the names, they can also be called as a building superintendent or a building caretaker or a resident manager, and sometimes the role can overlap that of a facility manager. Uh, what does this uh, role of a building manager involve? What, uh, what it is? Uh, it's quite multifaceted. Building managers can oversee facilities, they conduct building inspections, they can prepare reports, they perform and coordinate uh, building maintenance and repairs, they monitor property, structure, technology, and maybe monitoring other areas, areas of the building, such as swimming pools, exercise and common rooms. So again, depending on the nature of the job and the nature of the establishment, you could be doing some or many or all of these uh, activities as a building manager. Building managers identify and help uh, also help fix potential problems for the safety and security of anybody using the establishment. Uh, the job itself is very dynamic. Uh, you know, it can provide you enough stimulation that you never get bored. It's not a lot of repetitive tasks. There's always some new aspect or new element to it. Uh, so if you're not afraid of some physical activity on the job, being up and about and, and not afraid of interacting with others, building management can be a great career choice for you. And 
other than the salary, this role can come with some good perks, uh, especially as a resident building manager, your living accommodation can be paid for. And so can your, your utilities like your internet, uh, cable, even cell phone. Uh, the job market is pretty strong. Uh, we all know how strong the real estate uh, has been uh, in, in BC and generally across Canada also. But uh, a 10 year uh, expected job opening in British Columbia is over 12,000 jobs. Uh, out of those 12,000, 7,000 are expected to be in lower mainland region. Now, what about the building manager program at VCC that we offer? It's, uh, it's quite flexible and affordable. There is no program application to fill out. You can take courses individually. Classes are typically in the evenings and on Saturdays, and you have plenty of completion time. You can take one course a term, two courses a term, even three courses a term, as your schedule allows. Uh, you learn about BC Law and Tenancy Act. You learn about the regulations, the building maintenance, cost control, supervisory skills. And uh, based on the last survey, 100% uh, of the students, they actually were satisfied or very satisfied with the education they, they receive. Uh, lastly, I also want to give a shout out to our instructors who are not here, but uh, I, I like to, you know, uh, just... Uh, uh, yeah, recommend you know our instructors are so amazing they are both industry professionals with over 50 years of combined experience one of our instructors is a practicing lawyer uh, and the other one is a managing director of a consulting company so there is lots to to learn and gain from their experience the class sizes are pretty decent i would say it's not more than 15 students so there's enough of interaction time for you to gain from your peers and also from the instructors uh, that's all I would have to say for the building manager program. And I'm happy to answer any questions in here, or you can also send us an email, send me an email. Uh, my email address is on the screen right there. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you so much, so much Sid. That's uh, very insightful. I had no idea of all the different things a building manager does. So this, this is really great. Um, again, throughout the session, pop your question in the chat box, or uh, we'll open it up later for a discussion. Okay, we are now going to move on to a couple more. Um, we'll hear from Sarah, who's gonna cover the next two. Um, we have wedding and events and then um, business management. So Sarah, I'll invite you over to the stage. Okay, thanks Elizabeth. Um, so um, the first program I'm gonna talk about is wedding and event management. Um, this is a certificate and it offers just kind of a broad range of skills to help you host meetings and plan weddings. And that's everything from logistics and marketing to kind of decor and cultural traditions as well. Um, the thing to know about this program is it's actually being renewed. So in January 2022, um, the program will have a slightly updated structure, um, but you can still begin uh, taking courses now in our May term. Um, and uh, our, we will make sure that, um, that you carry over into the new program and complete it. So the courses that are being offered in May are destination wedding, uh, wedding planning and event management. And um, this is also part of continuing studies. And one of the things about this, the programs in continuing studies is the high degree of flexibility. So um, you can take these classes in any order. You don't have to take all three, you can just take one or two of them. Um, and there also is no, um, no kind of prerequisite. It's simply to register for the classes as well. Um, meetings and events have had been um, impacted by COVID, of course, um, things have changed a lot. Um, and um, there has been, I think, there are there's associations around uh, event managers and about 20 percent of people have left this kind of field and industry um, over the last year but i personally see that as an opportunity for somebody that is just starting out in the program um, just thinking about getting into this industry to have a chance to go and learn at school and um, you know within a year or two you would be ready to go out into into the world and there will be space there for you um, 
And it's, it's just a new, a new way of doing it as well, right? Figuring out how to host an event like Experience BCC um, and becoming an event planner with, um, in a tech, technological um, world that we're living in and same with weddings as well. So doing it in a new, in a new and interesting way. Um, I am not the program coordinator for this, but I will do my best to answer any questions you may have about it. Um, Joy um, is, uh, that's whose email is on the slide right now, and she most certainly can help you um, dig a little deeper into, into the program and, uh, and its offerings. She is um, a wedding and event planner herself, so um, that's, that's all I have to say, I think, about wedding and events. And carrying on taking a breath um, is uh, is our leadership program. So this is a, a certificate program as well. And um, the thing to know about this is that is it's kind of focused on um, applied leadership. So you are kind of taking job ready skills and applying them immediately to your workplace and um, and it's also a, a more relaxed kind of environment, very welcoming. Um, so you don't need a suit and tie. Um, when you show up in your Zoom classes, no need for a suit and tie at all. Um, and um, for this, it is, um, they, there, you focus on leadership, but there's opportunities to kind of delve into some specific topics. So it could be uh, that you're really interested in coaching um, or business management. So leadership is kind of the core um, set of courses, and then you can kind of explore a little bit into where your um, where your interests lie. Um, our instructors for this program are really amazing. Um, they are um, they work in the industry. Um, some of them have uh, a PhD as well, so there's lots to learn from, from them. Um, and again, like I say, with continuing studies, um, you can take the classes in the leadership uh, program area in any order. There is no admission requirements. Um, there, and you have three years in total to complete the program. Um, and that it's up to you. It can, you can do it in a year, um, just depending on how much you want to be studying um, at any given time. Um, yeah, I think, and again, there's Joy's uh, contact information on the screen, but I will do my best to answer questions about the program areas as well. Thanks so much, Sarah. These are, these sound like very interesting programs. And um, as you will hear throughout the session, um, a lot of our instructors are already in, in the industry. And so you'll get to know what it's like uh, to be in the industry even before you graduate. So that's super helpful. Um, now, uh, I want to bring attention to some new programs that we are offering. So the first one's going to be marketing technology, and Callie's here to talk about that. So Callie, the floor is yours. Thank you so much. So yeah, my name is Callie, and uh, we are really excited to be launching these uh, two new programs. I'm going to talk about the marketing technology diploma first. Uh, we're launching it in September of 2021, so just in the fall. Um, so yeah, about that program with a few key highlights. Um, so marketing obviously has been a key function in many organizations for quite some time. And now this program takes it to, into a little bit of a different, more specific, more technological angle. Um, the program it consists of four academic terms, 15 credits each. So a total of 60 credits for the total. Um, the student would have, you'd have a chance to finish it within five years, but it is um, basically it's, it's, it, um, we, it's supposed to be on a full-time basis in over two years, but um, it can, you can take up to five years to complete. The first year of the program is designed to just really create that foundation of the business knowledge. And then the second year, it kind of takes you more specifically into marketing and uh, the technology aspects of marketing and software. Uh, so it's designed to give students um, an opportunity to advance their career into a more specialized study of technology to focus on the automation part of the marketing, as I said. So which seems to be the direction that a lot of organizations are going. And as you graduate, they're expecting you to have those skills if you are graduating with a marketing diploma. Um, the graduates develop, obviously, the hands-on skills in order to enter the market. Uh, they, they, you know, you could still tackle the traditional um, roles in marketing, as well as the digital marketing, um, customer relationship management, database administration is obviously going to be a very key part of this program as well. Um, after graduation, you will be able to test to get your certification for this for the 
for the CRM, as well as Salesforce is going to be another focus. And at the end, of course, uh, you can also get your Salesforce certification as well. Um, students uh, learn obviously the latest software, not just the software too. They, there's a big focus on the analysis of the software and of the data that um, is presented within the software. So this is obviously going to be a huge skill um, that the student will be able to have over the, over the two years of this program. Um, VCC delivers this program. We're downtown campus. There's going to be a little bit of a blend, uh, but mostly classroom based. Um, and um, yeah, it'll be a blend of domestic and international students. And um, one other thing to um, just make a note of for students that might wanna take um, this diploma further and get their degree, their VCC is in the talks to create a transfer uh, pathway for that to occur. So some specific outcomes um, and, ski and key skills that the student will get over the, um, over the two years of this program, of course, critical thinking, uh, which will come from all the classroom stuff that is done. Um, and developing a marketing plan, which um, is, is, is a very big hands-on skill that, um, and it will be the expectation of your employer to do that. Uh, marketing automation, what works best within the organization, what might not work best, um, but this will give a various overview of all the automation um, aspects and how to use, like I said, that data analysis and how to um, implement strategies within the organization. Um, so that is all important. And um, yeah, some, some key skills that we would want you to have or grasp or, or get throughout the program is, of course, computer literacy. It's important being a techno technology program and um, some knowledge of various social media programs, also very important and ability to work well with um, uh, on a team is also going to be very important within, within this program. So overall program um, will definitely prepare you for the hands-on that you'll need and employer, employers will expect. Yeah, so that's the marketing diploma. Um, and I will now also take a breath <laughs> and talk about the accounting diploma. So some key highlights for the accounting diploma. Um, it's designed for students um, to have that solid foundation in business management and of course have the opportunity to focus on the accounting. The first year, um, you know, like I said, we'll kind of give you an overview of business and then it will more specialize in the second year. Again, it's 15 credits per term, four terms. You will, just like the marketing diploma, have up to five years to complete. And, um, but it is meant to be done on a full-time basis over two years. Um, the accounting diploma will primarily be done in front of a computer, as you can imagine. Um, there's gonna be a lot of uh, time in the accounting lab activities. Of course, a lot of it's class-based and group work um, as well. Um, there will be lectures, case studies, discussions, just all sorts of different delivery methods in order to, um, to apply all this, all this information. Um, upon completion, the students will have some key business skills and some of the more specific accounting related skills they'll be able to have is how to record, prepare and present financial transactions and statements for all types of organizations, which is super important skill. The accounting software uh, for accounting, payroll and tax remittance functions, also very important. And then um, students will also be able to learn how to prepare individual income tax returns and also provide basic tax planning advice in compliance with the Canadian Income Tax Act. So also very important. Another key important um, piece of information for this program, it, it can also prepare a student and create, a, we are looking to create a potential pathway in order to obtain a degree. Um, a credit pathway, and then eventually, if a student is also interested in becoming a CPA, which is a chartered professional accountant, this will also create um, a framework and a pathway for that outcome. And some key, um, just job prospects in the future. Um, one thing to note is they, they, they say the work BC notes that 73% percent of accounting technicians and bookkeepers um, will be replacing retired workers um, and also um, both those occupations associated with the diploma in accounting like, such as accounting technicians and bookkeepers and payroll clerks um, are, are classified as high opportunity occupations so that 
also means that um, they start at a higher than average, they have a higher than average growth and they start at a higher than average pay compared to other jobs in this province of BC. And according to the Canadian Job Bank, uh, this is also a pretty awesome fact, 30% of the accounting technicians and bookkeepers are self-employed, which is uh, double the rate of other workers in Canada. So yeah, overall, this program really creates a solid foundation uh, for any pathway that you like, whether it's degree, CPA, or um, get you ready for the job um, right away after the diploma. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you so much, Kelly. I, I did notice there is a question, but we'll get to that in the Q&A portion. So hold on. Um, thank you. Um, this is all very interesting. Um, and last but not least, I do want to introduce you to Ria, who is going to talk a little bit about some other uh, programs in business admin. Um, Ria is speaking today, but uh, if you do have further questions, you can contact Julia Slade and her email address is, is listed here. So Ria, over to you. Thanks, Elizabeth. I think I have the Legal Administrative Assistant Program. Hello, everyone. Can you all hear me? <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, there you go. My microphone's on. Uh, my name is Ria Salonga, and I'm one of the instructors in the Applied Business Department. I teach courses in the Administrative Professional Program. I am actually proud to say that I'm a product of this department. I graduated the Administrative Assistant Certificate Program in 2012 and completed the Executive Assistant in 2016. And I'm now back in the department teaching in the program. So let's talk about the Legal Administrative Assistant. Um, you will acquire skills and knowledge to work with legal documents relating to corporate law, conveyancing, litigation, family law, wills, and estate. I just want to talk about uh, what the program entails. The program is five months long, full time, and in, it includes a two week practicum. Classes run from Monday to Thursday from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. And the class size is relatively small, which will really give you a lot of time with your instructor. Um, the next intake for this program is September 7, 2021. And yeah, if you have any further questions about the Legal Administrative Assistant Program, I really can't speak on behalf of what the program entails. Please contact Julia Slade, my department head. Thank you. And we have one more for the Administrative Professional, which yeah. also Rio will talk about. Yes, this is the program that I actually teach right now. The Administrative Assistant Program has been offered under different names since at least the 1960s. The program duration was eight months in length, eight, eight months in length and divided into two fourth term. To align with the rapid change in technology and economic demand, Applied Business Department conducted a self-study report in 2016 that led into the program renewal. As a result of that program renewal, the program name was changed to Administrative Professional. It follows the International Association of Administrative Professional, or IAAP. The Program Advisory Committee suggested the name change to confer a higher level respect for the occupation. The program is eight months long, full time, and it, it includes a three weeks practicum. Classes runs from Monday to Thursday, 8.30 a.m. to 3 p.m. Class size is limited to 23 students. The next start date, we have one that's coming up in May, and the next one will be September 7. What you'll learn in this program are the following. You'll learn correct keyboarding technique, Microsoft Word, Outlook, Excel, professional phone etiquette, office equipment, preparation of business documents, writing plans, effective uh, and strategic communication skills, respectful and ethical workplace behavior. And now you ask where are the graduates? Well, I can tell you our graduates work at the moment in many different industries from hospitality to tourism to school district to post-secondary city of Vancouver city of Port Moody and many more and uh, that's about it if you have any question I am very familiar with the um, with the program for administrative professional and again Julia Slade is my department head her email address is 
right in that slide. Thank you so much, Ria. Thank you for sharing what all these programs entail. All right, so now you've heard a little bit about a brief overview of all these different programs where you take it from here. Um, we have a couple of info sessions coming up if you wanna dive a little bit deeper into these, what, what these programs are. Um, here you'll have a, a little bit more of an overview of these programs specifically. Um, and you can ask uh, a lot of questions about, about these uh, one, well, just in a, a group session, kind of one on one with your program advisor. Um, so we have legal administrative assistant coming up, um, that's next week, and then um, administrative professional as well. So uh, you can sign up online at vcc.ca slash info, and we'll send you the Zoom meeting link um, ahead of the date. Um, I'll take, I'll let you take uh, some notes there. And then next we'll talk a little bit about advising. Um, you know, if you have questions about what kind of requirements you might need for any of these programs, uh, we have Chief Fumi here today to, you know, tell you a little bit more about that process. So Chief Fumi, it's uh, up to you now. Thank you, Elizabeth. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Chief Fumi. I'm from advising department. Um, you may wonder if you meet the program requirements or you may need some upgrading, um, you may need an assessment, or you may wanna know how to start your application process. To find it out, please make an appointment with one of the advisors. We are offering phone or Zoom appointment, 30 minutes, and you need to call 604-871 seven zero 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 extension two to set up the appointment uh, we have an appointment uh, from monday to friday and we open late on wednesdays until seven we also offer drop-in advising monday to friday from two to four this is a same day appointment same number 604-871-7000 extension two drop-in is for quick questions and we also have an all-day advising room at the experience bcc today and tomorrow we were here until five and you're more than welcome to drop by and ask any questions uh, we also um, connect you to the different student service department and we're all here to assist you to make your bcc study life would be successful thank you Thank you so much, Chief Fumi. And again, um, Carolyn has kindly dropped in the Zoom meeting link uh, for you to attend you know, an advising session today. So there you go, it's in the chat room. And uh, if you are ready to apply, you can go to vcc.ca slash CS for continuing studies. And many of our programs that we talked about today are fall, fall under that category. Okay, now I wanna open it up to some questions from the group. You are free to unmute yourself and ask a question and one of our presenters will speak to it. Um, you can also raise your hand um, or pose them in the chat box. So Carolyn, um, who's helping me today, are there any questions? Uh, we had a question earlier for Callie. Do you offer intermediate counting classes? So the counting classes we have are introductory, but as they go into the second year, um, we have more level two type courses. So for example, um, there'll be the management accounting and there'll be intermediate accounting one and then intermediate accounting two. So it does get quite um, granular and specific when it comes to accounting. Yes, lots of accounting courses in there. I don't know if that answers your question. I could, I could also send um, a list of all the courses if that is helpful as well to, to you. Hi, everybody. My name is Kimberly. I wanted to know, I came into the meeting late. I'm not sure if I missed the big business technology part. Was that in this meeting? There's the marketing technology. Is that the one you're referring to? Yes, I think so. 
yeah. <laughs> um, I'm very new to the, I, I just saw it on the website. What I wanted to know, because I'm not seeing a course on the website, it says to be announced. So I wanted to know if you can share a course or the, the range of the course and um, what is the requirement yeah. to admit or maybe apply I'll, to the course. Yeah, sorry, maybe I'll let advising answer that. Okay. If that's okay. As far as, as, far as cost um, requirements, let me just find out. It is not still on the website, and yeah. we are for, looking for the information. Yeah, for the requirements, the they want a high school graduation, and they also want um, a, an equivalent of math eleven and an English twelve for the basic admin requirements. And then for cost, it is on our website. I'm not one hundred percent sure exactly what it is. Um, all right, I'll go back to the website to look for the cost. Um, what if you have a um, university degree already? I have a bachelor's in computer science already, but um, I do marketing as a profession. And I mean, obviously I would incorporate the technology there <laughs> with the BSc in computing. So um, if you're interested in marketing technology program, one wondering about your eligibility for the program, I suggest you to make an appointment with an advisor and we can sit with you and discuss about your um, educational history to see if you really qualify for the program. Let's look at your documentation together. Please set up the appointment with an advisor. Okay, via the link that, um, via the number that was sent before, extension two. Sorry? Is it via the number that was sent before extension yes. two? Yeah, so you okay. need to call right. 604 871 7000 extension two, and we will talk to you soon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. and, and we're, la and we're launching much. the program in September of this year. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And of course, you are free to drop in in advising all this afternoon until 5 p.m. and tomorrow. So the Zoom meeting link is in the chat box, and you can book uh, an appointment right away. All right, I already copied the link. Thank you very much. Perfect. Okay, Carolyn, there are a few more questions. Do you want to um, move on to the next one? Sure, there's um, quite an extensive one about the business programs from Kochi. Um, are there any VCC organized networking or job fair opportunities within the business programs? And if yes, which business program or programs have them? Um, how do we take advantage of them? When do they happen? Um, let's start with that one. Um, so as far as networking job fair opportunities, I know right now this is a brand new program, so we haven't set anything up, but we, the business programs are part of the, uh, the school of hospitality, food studies and business. So in hospitalities, in hospitality, for example, we have a diploma and a degree program, and we do exactly that. We do networking job fair opportunities right now, of course, they're virtual, um, but normally they are face to face where we bring employers onto the campus and um, provide that for the students. We definitely encourage um, the students to get out there and uh, we have established, um, connections with employers and we already do that in business as well because we have other business programs beyond the, the accounting and the marketing ones with, that are new so we would have similar um, a, a similar setup for these new programs as well thank you can you expand a little bit more on the difference between office administration and the legal office skills versus legal administrative assistant um, how might one go about deciding which one uh, which one is more accepted by employers? Hi, can you hear me? Yep. Really All right, I have, to, I have to switch on my iPhone right now. My internet is down at home. Um, the difference between the office administration, um, the program that we offered in applied business department, uh, these programs are all full time. The continuing studies on the office administration, the legal uh, skills, these are taken individual courses. So basically, when you start program in applied business, it's, it's a, you're in a cohort. You'll start together and you're finished within the time frame that you're allotted to. But in terms, it depends on the industry that you'll be applying. Um, I think both programs, they are accredited or they're um, um, 
the um, employers actually really look into that one. Um, all I know is like they're both accepted in the industry. And I, if I can just comment on the continuing studies, um, which is the office admin uh, legal office skills. Um, yeah, it is a part-time program. Um, yes. So that lets you work um, during the day and uh, attend school in the evenings. And it is, um, I guess it's just a, maybe a, a more flexible schedule in terms of learning, um, but has the potential to take a little bit longer than uh, if you're in school full time. Um, but I think Rhea is right that um, both are accepted by employers. It's just what fits um, best with your life in terms of learning. Thank you. Um, and one more question. Um, what is a LEARN, L-E-R-N certificate? Um, versus a VCC Award of Achievement. Um, uh, and sorry, what's the difference between a LEARN certificate and a certificate versus an Award of Achievement? Yeah, that's probably a question for continuing studies as well that I can um, uh, attempt to answer. Um, so uh, a LEARN certificate is um, a partnership that we have um, with uh, an outside educator um, through You Got Class, and they um, are do the instructing and um, the accredited accreditation and so that's the learn certificate um, this the certificate through continuing studies is a vcc accredited um, certificate um, and um, it's usually at this point a, a slightly longer program um, and like more hours involved than the learn certificates and then an award of achievement is usually um, a bundle of classes um, that, um, again, uh, they can be non-credit classes or credit classes, um, and is, again, a shorter kind of learning experience. Um, and in terms of the, so basically, there is some difference between costs based on the length of these uh, different types of certificates and awards of achievement. Um, and in terms of um, employers, um, I don't think, um, I think really that it comes down to the skills and what skills you learn through the program, whether it's a learn certificate, a certificate or a word of achievement, um, really it comes down to the skills that you're acquiring through the experience. Um, does uh, an employer know what a learn certificate is? Probably not. Um, but again, like I say, it comes down to the skills that you're, you're learning and how that might help you become more employable. Um, so hopefully that helps answer that question. Thanks, Sarah. Um, with the Legal Administrative Assistant Program, what is a typical practicum location and what are possible employment opportunities? Thanks, Caroline. Um, the program has two week practicum. Majority of the um, our host, our practicum host, are law firms in downtown Vancouver. Of course, during COVID time, um, we kind of structure it in a way that you're in a simulated law firm. But um, during our before COVID, all our practicum hosts are legal offices in the downtown core. Um, and what are possible employment opportunities? Oh, um, I, I think in terms of uh, the employment rate of our legal administrative assistant right now, they have 96% employment rate. So it's quite high. Um, before actually, before they finished the program, a lot of lawyers in downtown, they wanted to actually hire our graduates. They contact us directly for, um, for basically uh, new hire or new recruits. Fantastic. Uh, Kimberly would like to know if there will be face-to-face -face classes in September. So I could probably respond to that one. Uh, we are preparing for a full return to campus in the fall, although uh, we are crossing our fingers. Uh, we, we don't know whether um, there will be, um, you know, hybrid models still at that time, but um, please um, do keep an eye out uh, for updates that will be posted uh, throughout the year until that happens. Um, we do have a team working on that. Yeah, so I would um, just put in the chat here the um, 
the website for you to find more information. There we go. Thank you, Danielle. Um, question from Michelle, does this mean admission to programs will be half capacity? I, I don't think so, although um, I'll, I'll let the program coordinators answer whether their programs have changed at all according to this past year. Did you run at full capacity or half capacity at all in your programs? Sarah I, did. Yeah, if I may just jump in uh, for, for the programs that we are offered uh, through, through my area, such as the building manager program, oh, we have had a very successful delivery to, through online learning and some instructors use Moodle as a learning management system. Uh, I just recently had a feedback session from one of the instructors and he expressed that students are actually looking forward to uh, online, online learning. I mean, obviously not all of them, but a significant majority of them uh, saves them time, saves them commute, and we haven't uh, had to adjust our maximum capacity because uh, online learning across sizes are pretty decent, I would say. Uh, we have capped it at 15 maximum, and that affords for a great opportunity for student-to-student, peer-to-peer interaction and also interaction with, with instructors. There is a good possibility that even with return to face-to-face -to -face, uh, learning, we may continue to deliver uh, some, if not many of our uh, building manager programs courses in an online format because of how much success it has had and, and what the feedback we have received from the instructors and the students. Thanks so much, Sid. Um, and just to touch on um, one of the questions uh, about you know employment opportunities as you know, Ria was saying um, a lot of our students, even before they graduate, uh, are getting job opportunities. So this is really great um, for anyone looking to enter the job market. Um, there, a lot of, especially legal administrative assistants are uh, quite in demand right now. Okay, thank you so much, Carolyn, for uh, the questions. Um, again, thank you. She has uh, provided these slides for you to take home with you. Um, I do want to move along here and let you know about some of the services that are available to you as a BCC student. So you heard from Chifumi today. She is one of uh, several advisors that we have on, on campus and available to you uh, as well once you register. Um, this is if you have questions again about uh, admission requirements and um, you know when do I need to apply. Um, there are um, scholarships and bursaries available to you as well. So we do have a financial aid office. And if you are an indigenous student, we have elders who are available to create a safe space for you to discuss any concerns that you might have. Um, so they are there for you as well. If you do need uh, interpreting services uh, or someone to help you out, we have disability services. And of course, um, if you do need to speak one-on-one -on -one in a private session uh, about any stress uh, or um, career guidance, we have counselors available um, for you as well. And there's another one that um, our students uh, really like. It's uh, the free professional tutoring services that you can access through our library and learning center. Um, and this has really helped our students in their studies, just when it comes to even things like math or English or uh, science questions and stuff like that. So these are available to you. And so what's next? Um, there are a couple of information sessions that you can attend to go more in depth into some of the programs that we talked about today. You can then meet with an advisor um, at your own time or today and tomorrow uh, up until five o'clock. And if you are all set to go and you really wanna apply now, uh, go to vcc.ca slash apply. All right, now I do wanna give you some codes. If you are a domestic student and um, you would like your application fee waived for today, um, it is a $35 application fee. Uh, we can waive that. So please uh, go to vcc.ca slash apply. And the promo code is info0421. And now this is really exciting as well. Uh, we 
have uh, the opportunity to give out a hundred, uh, th sorry, a thousand dollar tuition credit to three lucky winners after this whole event is over. So um, please visit vcc.ca slash experience and type in the code skills and you could be one of uh, the lucky winners. All right, uh, do we have any more questions from the group today before we leave? Um, I was just trying to read uh, Michelle's question directed mm -hmm. to me. Uh, do do I have a few minutes, Elizabeth, to yep, address sure. that question? I'm not sure if I'd be able to do justice to answer that question in its uh, entire entirety because it's a little uh, bit of a subjective kind of question depending on the role. So Michelle is wondering uh, about uh, uh, as a building manager, you are responsible for so many, uh, you have so many duties, it might be difficult to take a break and there is potential for burnout. Yes, Michelle, that's, uh, that's very true. Uh, there are a lot of perks as a building manager. And I know there are some building managers who have taken on, on a lot of responsibilities. Uh, you, you do have some flexibility because uh, not in, in the distance past, I came across a building manager as I was looking for uh, an accommodation for one of my family members. And I learned that that building manager was managing three or four buildings. Now, I can guarantee you that by managing three or four buildings, that building manager is at least working 50 to even 70, 80 hours, hours a week. Uh, salary would be great. I wouldn't be surprised if that building manager was earning upwards of 80,000, 90,000 a year. Uh, although I didn't ask that to the building manager, but you have some flexibility to take on, on, on how much uh, on the role that fits your, your needs and your lifestyle. Uh, I know some building managers prefer to work at only, let's say one building or be a resident building manager where you are on call, yes. The average time that you spend on the job should be around eight hours uh, a day. Uh, however, some of those times can be in the in the late evenings. In case of emergencies, yes, you may have to wake up in the middle of the night, although those are few and far between. You can also work uh, at reduced hours. Let's say you can work uh, somewhere from 24 to 30, 32 hours as a building manager. Uh, and then, there's always opportunities to take in break, uh, maybe not exactly the same way as you would do in a day to day regular job, uh, but uh, you can certainly, uh, you know, have that option. Your employer would be able to provide you enough time to take a break a week, two weeks. It's not that building managers don't take vacations, they do take vacation. Uh, it's just that the vacations may fall depending on, on the scope of the responsibility, they may not uh, be able to take it exactly at the time that they want, but it could be at other times. Uh, I'm happy to talk more about it if you want to you know, discuss about it uh, over, over phone conversation or Zoom meeting, just send me an email. And if necessary, I can certainly uh, check with our instructors also. They are directly engaged in this, in this area. Sid, one more for you. Were you a building manager? Oh, I, I wish I was, <laughs> uh, but uh, no, I am not. I, I, I do have an applied science background, uh, but uh, I, I do uh, interact a lot with my, with my instructors, or with uh, prospective students and graduates also. And just, it's something which is very interesting to see the landscape change around us, uh, yeah. Thank you so much, Sid. Well, I really loved all these great questions uh, you've been asking so far. Uh, thank you so much for, for doing that. Again, you do have the um, slides to the PowerPoint. Um, you have all the codes you need to get your discounts. Um, and of course, the links to the Zoom meetings. If you are an international student, there is uh, a room for that one. And there's also um, a room for advising as well. So. Thank you, everyone. And if you do have further questions, um, reach out to one of our program uh, coordinators. Uh, thank you to all our presenters today and the co-hosts uh, who have been helping out. All right, we hope to see you soon. Bye.